Welcome coaches to our Valley Youth Soccer League introductory presentation. It will discuss the preferred training model and our side-by-side -side game day setup. My name is Darren McLeod. I'm the director of soccer. But first off, with thank you for coaching. We can't offer a soccer program without our coaches and our division managers. So we much appreciate it that uh, you volunteer your time and hope you enjoy your season with your players. Presentation overview, we'll talk about our session plans that we will send out, some coaches guides that we've added to the to the this year's curriculum, talk about the benefits and operations of a preferred training model, and the same again for our side-by-side -side game days on Saturdays, some example fields that have been set up, and some school skill acquisition videos that we've given you some links for that you can use. Session plans will be sent out weekly, Sunday night we'll email them to all the coaches, they're tailored towards each groups. Bambinos, micros, minis, all have and all of them have a different uh, curriculum. The session plans come in four parts for all the divisions except for Bambinos. It has a the description, uh, coaching points, and then the beyond theme for to follow the theme of the of the day. The Bambinos only have two. They uh, don't have a training day. They do single Saturday uh, train and play. This is an example of a Bambinos curriculum. It has two parts with a narrative to describe to your players and a, and a couple of quick games. You play those for 10 minutes each or so uh, with some breaks in, inside it and then you play a couple of games uh, for, the, for the inside your hour. This is an example of micros, the week one session. Each of the sessions come with uh, four parts so with a descriptor, coaching tips and points, uh, focus, player habits and mentality for the day. For the skills boxes, uh, we have uh, links to some videos at the end of the presentation that uh, will show you a whole bunch of skills that you can use and introduce in, into those uh, beyond toe touches and foundations and, and such. This is an example of a junior session. It has the same four parts uh, and a, th a theme with uh, some key points at it and some progressions and some conditions to help you attain that theme for the day. We're just in the process of adding coaches guides for all the curriculum. The goal will be to have one for every session. So you have this expanded coaches points for that particular drill. How to challenge the players if it's if the players are too e find it too easy or how to make it easier for the players that are finding it too hard. Some key points to focus in on. And we're slowly building inventory for Fanino, for example, with four goals. We want to have a attacking theme one and a defending theme one. This is an example of uh, the a coach's guide. This is for the micros first day. Is the, the the drill is score as many as you can. You can see we've added some coaching points, key points, uh, how to challenge players or help them to find success. Likely a bit more to add to all of them, but as we build our inventory, we'll keep expanding the points on them. We use a preferred training method that was introduced by Canada Stalker a few years ago. It, the best benefit of the PTM is the, the kids are engaged. They don't get bored because they have a new, a new challenge and a new session to move to every 15 minutes or so. It allows you as a coach to become an expert in the one session. You have to just have to learn the one for the night and not four. It moves from a task center to a player center model where the, the, you can focus in just on your players. All the stations are set up. You don't have to move, move and pick up cones. It allows all the players to experience different coaches. Everybody learns differently. So a different phrase or different saying, you know, the way of delivering is very beneficial for the player. It gets, allows you to get to know all the players because hopefully that uh, these players will be with you for the right through graduation uh, and your player your teams will change and we move in the competitive program. All these players that you have in the VOSL will be part of that program. Builds a club identity. This is rather than a team identity. It helps you get to know everybody this is a link to a video that put out by Manitoba Soccer and it just discusses the benefits of the preferred training method. I suggest watching it. It really captures, captures the reason why, why we do it. The link is down below in the comments. On training nights, uh, our divisions are typically broken up into teams of four. Those four teams can group up and work at one station. Each of the teams setting up a part. Uh, those groups can work together for the season. You can talk to your division manager about uh, making arrangements to have uh, your group partnerships. One coach will travel with a team from station to station and help introduce the players to the coach leading that station. 
other coach stays with the station and coaches us coaches it for the teams that are coming into it divisions with six or uh, uh, three team multiples of three uh, you'll have to decide amongst yourself how to set up the four station you can do it collectively or take turns but someone will have to move that four station this shows a crew of four all set up important to put yourself into the middle uh, and keep your kit there and uh, that way and ask your parents to stay on the outside and that way you can move freely amongst uh, the rotation it makes it go really smooth one important thing to do is establish a timekeeper so that's someone that will monitor the clock and call the rotations staff will move moving moving between fields and stuff so it's better if one of the coaches take the lead and does that and they just show the rotation in the next slide as clockwise that that that's fine uh, you can as long as you go uh, the same way it doesn't doesn't matter if you're faced with a group of three uh, one station will always be empty and teams will rotate just as they would normally they'll just rotate into an empty station the only difference there is that a coach or coaches may have to learn a second station you can't stay in the empty station and be the expert because you won't have anybody to coach so you have to move over and help uh, that other coach and the first likely on the first rotation you both will be new to it so you just have to be aware uh, on your rotations that though you will have you'll be facing with this knowing a second drill Just a quick display of to show you how the rotation goes. As the team moves over, obviously the one coach will have to move, move over also. The next couple of slides are just examples of a training session and how they'll be laid out and marked. Just be aware that sometimes uh, this is for spring of 2023, so they could be different uh, on your year. And there's always a chance that there might be slightly changes uh, before the season gets started, but your division managers will obviously provide you with the up-to-date maps and maybe a rotation uh, where to how to set up a rotation cycle. Areas will be marked out. Stace yourself in the middle like we talked about. Ask your families to stay on the outside so the players can move, move with these the stations. So the following examples are from the, for this year. Up at Brooklyn, we'll have uh, teams of divisions with 10. So there'll be two groups of three and a group of four set up at Brooklyn, up at Brooklyn for the micros divisions. The other divisions will be up at Highland We'll have individual maps on each of the night, each of the nights to show you where you should go, and those will be in groups of four. And there'll be lots of spaces, lots of space, and we may introduce the usually into the bigger goals this year. The next couple of slides just show the breakdown for a 60 and a 75 minute session. Each of the sessions will uh, be given in the weekly distribution. They're always included, and again, just remember to pick a to pick a timekeeper. This is one that's for a 60 minute session. It shows the part, how to run each of the parts and how approximately how long to run them. And this one is for 70, 75 minutes. We really believe in the in playing small sided because it just gives the players greater interactions and more touches on the ball. And the more times they can touch the ball, the better they'll be. With less players, there's a greater, greater, greater chance of them having a chance to have the ball. Uh, it puts them closer to the ball because of the smaller field. Players as players grow and physically mature the size of the field will be up just a little bit if we follow the best practices introduced by canada soccer and ultimately scoring is a lot of fun and that's ultimately how you want to what you want to do that's the first principle of soccer can i score so we put you in a small field and put you close to the net and give you more chances to score on game day we use side by side games or twin games if you're a team of, say, in the youth division and you, you're playing 5v5, you'll have a, maybe 12 to 13 players on your team. You'll have both team, both sides going with a, with a 5v5. It allows you to split your squad into two and make, a, make balanced teams. It allows you to challenge to their ability by balancing the competition on each side. It allows coaches to move players between the sides and encourage to do it. You can also on days that are uh, numbers are down. You can uh, you can adjust your size. And if you have to play four v four on the one side versus five v five, you can do you can do so. Uh, coaches can be on the field in the Bambinos division. The next few slides shows you the differences between the various size games you're playing. This first slide is for three v three. All the slides show on the left uh, operations of how do you manage manage and uh, set up for the day moving players between sides how you set up in the middle and then on the right it shows you conditions for for gameplay the 4v4 
and the and the five and the five v five. Each of these will be included in your uh, distribution weekly. It'll show you for your particular age group. This slide will be included. The uh, six v six is shown in the side by side, but we don't actually set up ourselves in the side by side. But it was it's shown this way because it is a good opportunity if you need to to move players between games. The biggest goal is just to get the players to play. So if one team is short and you need to have a player come from uh, from the other side, throw on a bib and have them come over and play for you. So some game day operations beyond soccer. The first division up every day, the 9 o'clock and 9.30 starts. We'll have to set up the fields. The goals have to be moved in place. Flag poles will have to be put, put out. Uh, ask your parents to help. Uh, it, it goes really quickly if everybody gives a little bit of hand. The last group of the day has to take the fields down, the uh, goals come off, and the flag balls get put away. Please ensure that the goals get taken off because uh, otherwise we'll have to move them. The city will give us grief if they don't. And it's a player, player kids safety issue to keep them off to the side. The grass fields will be numbered with, uh, with signs. Uh, the next couple slides are the setup for this spring. Uh, obviously they could same warning as earlier, they can change the last minute, but always check with your division manager on, on the day. And on the uh, first few days, uh, there'll be staff there to help direct the, where you should go. This is Valley View, uh, the setup at the clubhouse. Uh, we got the my, minis over on the Valley View one to the left, the nearest the uh, Marquesville School, and the micros and bambinos are out front of the clubhouse. Goals uh, for the micros and minis are kept in the clubhouse. Uh, storage room and then the goals for the minis will be along the fence line nearest the parking lot to the Mark Isfeld High School. This is Mark Isfeld uh, lower and upper fields. Uh, they're, the fields are down behind the high school. Some new folks don't realize that they're down there. You just have to walk along the side of the, the, the gymnasium and to access the fields. Uh, the one, two are on the main plane surface. The three is in behind and four is on upper. The upper location. The most important, the biggest ask for this one is at the end of the day that the nets just get pushed off. They don't have to be on a tree line or a fence line, they just have to be pushed to the, to the sides. This is that uh, Vanity Turf with four fields uh, for the boys to, to set up. You can see how the yellow lines will des designate where the goals go and we just use cones and flagpoles for the day to designate our four fields. And then the girls at the day, at the end of the day, will have to take the fields down. Uh, if you can put the nets into the cubby holes, I appreciate it, and the ones on the end can just be pushed back. We want our players to be confident on the ball, and that comes through dribbling. All these sites have tons of great resources to show you the different skill moves that they can, can be offered, offered to the players. Take an opportunity to uh, focus the, on a few that you, that you really like. Most importantly, uh, using the bottom of your foot. It's an underutilized, underutilized skill, and the more chances we can use the bottom of our foot to get in and out of trouble and manipulate the ball the better our players will be. For the very young players, the physical literacy is the most important thing. So, you know, having them touch the ball with the various sizes, parts of the foot, uh, if you can even get them to do a pullback turn, uh, it would be great advances for their play. So yeah, have a, have a look, get a couple that you really like. Uh, my favorite is the Corchetta. That concludes our presentation about the preferred training method and game day setup for the VYSL. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to the club. Thank you again. We truly, we cannot offer soccer in the Valley without your support and dedication to the kids. So thank you very much. We'll see you on the, on the field.